It's Bourbon Night. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And the bottle that's sitting here has nothing to do with today's episode. We just wanted to, to drink out something. And this is the Woodenville 8 Year 100 Proof. Uh, shout out to uh, Joseph Brezo for the, the hookup on Thanks that. Thanks for sharing that yeah, with just us. Just drinking on it. We get a lot of questions uh, over the years, over the eight years we've been doing this channel, and some questions seem to pop up every so often. Mm -hmm. So we thought uh, in this episode we would address one of those questions. And that question is when you guys are doing a tasting, why do you edit out after the whiskey touches your lips? Like the part where we're tasting? Yeah. Uh, we've had it phrased as why do you guys edit out when you swallow? Or, you know, why does it instantly cut to you guys talking about it? That type of thing. Hmm. Which I can understand the curiosity. Yeah, and some people might take that as, I don't want to say suspicious, but they want to know what happened in that time before you got to your thoughts, or are they missing anything, or? Yeah, are you cutting out any reactions that would be helpful for mm -hmm. the viewer, or just, maybe it's just curiosity. Why do you do why it? Why do you do it? Are you going to try to explain to us and show the class <laughs> why we do it? Yes. The last video I was editing, the Eagle Rare uh, 1979 um, short 10, 101 Short and Sweet. By the way, speaking of that, Sarah, we got so enamored in tasting that uh, old Eagle Rare that we forgot that it came from a different distillery than Buffalo Trace even back mm -hmm. then. And that just completely flew our mind. And then we put it out there and people were like, well, you know, it's a different distillery. Like, well, well yeah. it was delicious. <laughs> but it was delicious. We were befuddled. The way I edit, uh, you mark in on your timeline and you mark out, and then you so basically connect the two pieces. You are editing. You're slicing out what you don't want. Yes, you're cutting out the parts that you don't want. Mm -hmm. And then they just go bye-bye off into go bye -bye. trash can world. Into the ether. I thought this time, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save every edit that I make, take it to the end of the timeline, copy and paste. So they'll all the edits will be there. So you made a compilation of all of the things that you cut out. Exactly. So uh, what I thought we would do first is just show you an unedited first sip. Uh, again, going back to that Eagle Rare 101 video. So here is what you would see if we did no editing. Let's dive into your health. That is. Oh. Okay, so yeah, yeah, other than our <laughs> the smacking sounds of us tasting and processing what we're tasting, you really don't miss anything. There's just a little gap in time in between when we're sipping and when we're actually able to form thoughts and words and tell, the, tell them back to you. Exactly, and that is part of it. As a whiskey taster, and I'm not saying like as a professional whiskey, I'm just saying like you you at home, anyone who tastes whiskey <laughs> and then talks about it, it even takes if it's you just a with minute. your friends. Yeah, you process because it is like, oh, I'm getting this on the palate, and then the mid palate, then the finish, and blah, blah, blah. how do I want to describe this? Right, what you... am I? It's oh, it's triggering a thought. It's grandma's basement. It's uh, you know whatever it is. So that obviously that takes time. It's the Kentucky Chew. The I don't want to hear that. It's, to be honest, it's me doing I, this thing. I don't want to hear that either. <laughs> I, I try to cut that mm -hmm. out because people are like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's like it's my process. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, but I do it. Okay? I do know that I don't want to see it. I don't <laughs> want to hear it. And so I'm really thankful that you cut that out most exactly. of the time. Exactly. And the other reason is because we value your time. We think your time is precious. So when I edit a video, I try to make it as tight as possible. Now, next thing I want to do, Sarah, uh, is I want to show you all that stuff at the end of the timeline that I just copied and pasted as I cut. Oh, I'm not going to enjoy this. This is everything. They got cut out. Now it's 58 seconds. The total runtime of the episode was seven minutes and 40 seconds. So imagine it being 58 seconds longer. One another whole minute. Just with this stuff in it. Okay, so I'm gonna show oh. it to you, Sarah, for the first time, and you guys, obviously, for the first time as well. Okay. Here we go. Um, Probably, thank you, John. You know. Um, right. Um, so. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. I think... Now, <laughs> that's... That is so... <sighs> A lot of smacking. Um, yeah, just on happenstance. Uh... <sighs> um... Um, you got Justin how but Chad. oh go ahead um for sure yes 
uh, and put it put it to good use. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow, super valuable gold, stuff. Right? right? I don't know about you, but gold. for me, it really changed the episode oh, to have that stuff man. left out. We should put that in the director's cut. Chuck. Absolutely, extended edition, <laughs> the director, the Lord of the Rings five-hour edition. So, uh, as you can see, there was nothing in there that was like our thoughts and opinions that we then were like, uh, maybe we should lighten up on that. Maybe we should say of, that a different way. A lot of breathing in. A lot, it's of, a lot of getting and formulating a thought. Trying to place it together, I mean, like even the stuff I'm doing right now is stuff that would not, <laughs> right? You know, make, make it, it in. Into the episode. And I don't think it add, it doesn't add any value. I mean, well, no, and, and I don't think anyone out there would say that that it does. This is more just like showing you, like this is the editing process for us. Everyone is different. Everyone's some, different. Some people like more of a natural approach of I'm just sitting down with a friend, and those those aren't edited. Uh, I very much like I've said, want to edit as tight as possible. So another thing that I don't do is jump cuts. Now, See, I don't, you, I like a jump cut. I don't just, mind I a know, jump cut. I know, but I was always taught as, you know, a, an editor to high jump cuts. So, so that's why we do the push-ins. That's why we cover it with B-roll. I never, if I can help it, show a jump cut, which you just saw 58 seconds. That's what I was going to say. Jump cuts. For the audience who does not understand or maybe not know what a jump cut is, yeah. that was 58 seconds of jump cuts. The, there was no continuity to them other than we're sitting in the same space. Yeah. I also want to point out that was 39 edits. Wow. 39 and pieces that Chad was like, nope, don't need that point. You know, 0.5 second, that one second. Every bit helps, even if it's 15 frames. You know, that's half a second right there. Uh, it, it adds up. It does add up. Clearly it, to it, a minute. It really does. I uh, used to have to edit 30 second commercials, so I know the value of 10 frames here and mm -hmm. 10 frames there can add up to get you exactly at that you have 30 to be second precise. mark. Well, all right, slow down there, Chad and Sarah, just for a second because we got to pay some bills. That's what this episode is all about. Is <laughs> talking about what's under the hood okay. and paying the bills as part of it. If you would like to support a mom and pop uh, shop. That's mom and pop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can do so by going to whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the Glen Cairns that we're drinking from. Uh, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, bottle cut candles. We have our elemental elixir cocktail syrup. And now, through all the Bourbon Heritage Month, which is September, by the way, you can get 10% off site-wide. That's even including sale items. Mm -hmm. Plus, free shipping on orders over $100. You just uh, enter the code, which is on screen here, and that'll get you that all through the month of September at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. If you like listening to us talk about all the extras and behind the scenes stuff, then that might be the place for you because that is where we put out after the episode exclusives, our barrel picks, and more. Yeah, and look at these awesome uh, names of our Patreon community. We couldn't do it without them. They are the teamwork that is making the dream work. And sometimes our focus group. If we're not sure about an episode we want to film or not, we'll just be like, hey, Patreon, let us know. So thanks to these fine folks who often give us their opinion. That's right. Now, we only put one ad in the middle of an episode, and here it comes. We'll be right back after this. Now, YouTube is a platform that does accept the jump cuts. I understand mm -hmm. that. In fact, it used to be a thing, and I don't know if you guys remember this, this is more of a, a solo shooter, so not two people, but just one person. They would be over here on this side of the frame, and then they would jump cut, and they would be over here on this side, and it was this bounce back and forth, like that's what I want to see the unedited part, seeing this person like, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Then I went over to the, you know, <laughs> and then there was this one guy that I used to watch that I stopped watching because I couldn't understand, like, I just couldn't stand his editing style. He would, every time, and he was a lot closer, so imagine, get on me, camera. Okay, well, we get the no, picture. No, it really likes you. Okay. He would start here, and then he would edit, and when it cut back, he was here, leaning back in. So, I'll do, I'll do the edit here. So, hey, guys, tonight on It's Bourbon Night. We're gonna be talking about Woodenville whiskey. It's 100 proof and eight years old. So let's get into it. <laughs> and I just- <laughs> You're scaring me. But I can see, that's too, I don't like that. That's, that's too much And he probably thought me. like, oh, people's attention spans are so razor thin. Now the trend has been actually floating the other way, Sarah. To more natural? More longer videos, mm -hmm. uh, less edits. But you know, when there is a topic that deserves to be longer, like our Know Your Distillery mm -hmm. videos, things like that, then yeah, we'll go, we'll go over. If it's like a flight fight or, you know, some other, maybe this video, I don't know. We try not to go over 20 minutes. It's just sort of been our thing. Like if, right. if it's gonna be a long video, if it can hit the 18 minute mark, that'd be good. But... <laughs> yeah, if it's gonna be longer than an episode of actual TV without 
commercials. That's, I don't know, like, I just find, you, again, your time is valuable and we want to keep all the valuable information in our videos, but we don't want to take any more of your time than we have to. So right. it's all about finding that balance. And I think Chad does a really good job. I like it. Uh, again, there's always people who are going to be like, I would watch an hour of this discussion. And What's there are gonna be <laughs> Right, and there are going to be, again, exactly. And there are also going to be people who are like, I would not watch more than one minute of this discussion, if at all. And that's fine too. On the flip side of that, you've always talked about wanted, wanting to do like even longer form, like documentary style stuff, which also so badly yes. is such a huge undertaking. Huge. Huge. Oh, well, okay. We were wondering where the, this topic would roll into and I just have it right now here, Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you kind of have to accept and not take too personally is when you put so much time and effort into an episode that you know, it might be like a Know Your Distillery where we get interviews and we do B-roll and we find the right music and we're actually you know trying to cause an emotional reaction because a mini of all doc. this. A mini doc, all this time, and you know it gets decent views, but then you put out a, a short and sweet on whatever it is, and it gets triple, quadruple, five x the views. And it was ten times less work. Ten, twenty, or times twenty times less work. Less work. Uh, but yeah, you can't take that personal. You can't take it personally because at some point, you know, again, everything's going to be for some people and not for other people. And I think it's sometimes when you look at episodes, sometimes it's a quality of the viewer and a quantity of the viewer. So again, like we said, those short and sweets that are on those like really appealing bottles to the mass, the, you know, the general public, mm -hmm. you are going to get more views and potentially more engagement. The smaller group of people who takes the time to watch something like that mini doc all the way through and leave a really thoughtful comment about how much they appreciate the time, energy, like the artfulness that went into creating that. Mm. Do you weigh those things the same? You know, right. because even though less people saw and appreciated because less people saw it, that doesn't mean it, it impacted people. There are people who remember that specific episode, especially other industry people yeah. who come up to you now because they saw that piece or That's they, true. they yeah. remember you because of yeah. that piece. So it right. holds more weight. Whereas mm -hmm. the people who really, all those viewers who watched that one episode of that short and sweet, could they call it out a year from now? Right. You know? Yeah. Well, yes. And that, that is a good point. And that does mean the world. Uh, but another thing is, that episode with fewer views is going to make the creator less money, whereas the video with more views is gonna make the creator more money. Here's the thing, some some people just seem to be more into it for making money than mm -hmm. anything else, and those are the channels that you can tell that, oh, they found what works and that's all that they're putting out there. Very formulaic. All that they're putting out there. For us, this is our main job, our main form of income right uh, we have other avenues that we work on but right. this is so that means we have to pay taxes on it we have to get our own insurance we have to pay for subscriptions and you know editing stock footage and yep. editing and, and the royalty free music and storage upon storage upon storage blah 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 so there's lots of bills to pay so it's a tightrope walk of do one for me do one for them right and they're not always exclusive sure like exactly that. and it's not always a 50 50 split no but it is something you have to keep in mind you know you have your passion projects like the mini docs and things like that that you want to make because you're passionate about them but you recognize that it might not be broadly appealing to the audience and then therefore mm -hmm. youtube won't serve it as much and then so it's like how much time can i spend on this thing that i love because i you know, again, you gotta eat, gotta you gotta the pay bills, the bills. If you're not gonna get, if it's not gonna be recommended enough, it's not gonna get new subscribers, right. it's not gonna grow the channel, it's not gonna grow your business. But that's not why we started this channel. We started right. this channel for fun yes. and it has turned into what it has turned into and mm -hmm. we have ridden that wave along with it. It is something that you do have to think about. I mean, it's business, that's just the way it goes, but. Well, I also think that the scary thing is if you completely go for the episodes that you know are gonna get you more views, you're pigeonholing yourself. Agreed. And it's like a death of creative. Agreed. Well, because I don't know, if you go that way, yeah, you're just serving the machine of YouTube. Yeah. When we do hunting videos and stuff, I like it because those are the best of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Because the audience really likes it because they get some, they get more, I don't know if it's like a vicarious thing or almost like more reality most. TV. Right. They also get really good views. So the platform likes it too. And we really like them because they're fun. So like, the platform's happy, the audience is happy, and we're happy. Everybody's right. happy. We love yeah. to do a hunting video, but we can't do one every week. 
that's why we say we'll do one a month and that's it. Mm -hmm. One a month, uh, because if you haven't already gotten burnt out from bourbon hunting videos uh, on whiskey tube as a whole, we don't want you to get burnt out from us on mm -hmm. those. So it's one a month, no more, no less. You know, on that same note, we know that like the top five best, most, you know, <laughs> hated. Ists. Ists. Li Worst, best, lists, numbers. Most, yeah. We know that it's clickable. I don't want to call it clickbait because that implies that there's no payoff. Well, in but, print, they call them listicles. Okay, a listicle. Yeah. I don't know about that, but sure, one of those. We know that they're highly clickable. That tends to mean that the platform's going to serve them more. But then at some point, you, the audience, becomes desensitized to that. If everything's the top five worst and the seven best and the most, da da da. Eventually you're just like, do I even, I mean, <laughs> and I get tired too. I'm like, I don't really want to do that unless it. Well, it becomes forced. You're like, feels, what's the, what's the five today? You're like, thinking about the angle to get the most views before you're yeah. even creating the content. I don't personally, as a creative, think that that's the best way to go about creating. Well, I know you have to think about it from do, every yeah, which angle. You do a little bit. It's sort of like the, the business part of it. You have to think of what the thumbnail is going to be, what the title is going to be. That's just part of the business part of it uh, it's not a part that i think either of us love we don't it's just it, a it's sort of like of a necessary evil mm -hmm. uh but you do get tired of or at least us can't speak for everyone but like what's the what's the question that's going to be asked in this thumbnail is this the best that they've ever is this the worst can it stack up to xyz and it, it's like i think i've grown tired of it i think they've fatigued me and i don't mean like anyone in particular just right. overall the general, not even yeah. whiskey tube just like in general mm -hmm. because i often find that i'm asking myself at the end was that question even answered or did <laughs> or, or I was just it watch... necessary to be asked right should yeah. did anyone care or that's why we try to come up with, like this episode, different ideas. Sure. Maybe this one doesn't do any good and that's fine. Eh. Who cares? Yeah. But it's something that we're interested in. We're something gonna... we wanted to do. And it's something different that we want to put out there and we constantly want to be pushing ourselves to innovate. If we come up with an idea and it takes off like wildfire and then we see other channels picking it up and doing the same thing, that's great. What do they call it? Parody is the greatest form of flattery. Yeah, no, not parody though, but yeah, like um... uh, replication, <laughs> not copying. What's the word? Imitation. Imitation. Yes, imitation. that's the word. And go. normally we would have cut oh, all parody. that out and I would have gone, you know what they say, imitation <laughs> is the most sincere form of flattery. Yeah, exactly. Um, at the same time, we can recognize that and still be like, cool, maybe there's too much of this particular type of content in our sphere now. And even though we feel this ownership of it, because it's something that we've been doing for a long time, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's the best for us or the audience or anyone else just to keep cranking it out just because we, we can say, well, we were doing it, you know, early on and, and you Before weren't. It was cool. Who cares? The hipster thing. Who cares? Yeah. Find something new to do. Take a fresh look at something. I, I just wanted to point out that we aren't uh, completely innocent, or I should say we're not guilt. We are not, not guilty. <laughs> oh, correct. Of, on the face value could be seen as, well, hey, that's not, not clickbait. I don't think we've ever clickbait, but. If we have, it wasn't a, intentional. That's a incendiary question on that title or, you know, th that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not uh, innocent of that. It's part of kind of the game. But again, like I said, it's that tightrope walk of let's do enough so we can live <laughs> right. without going all the way over here, or all the way over here, whatever you want to say in the example mm -hmm. of doing clickbait or doing really incendiary uh, titles that has nothing to do. I mean, that is clickbait, but sure. has nothing to do with the, uh, the episode. Yeah, I think a lot of what we've done over the last eight years, a lot of it has been discovery of where we want to go. And there's sometimes when we don't know, and sometimes you have to try something to realize yeah, we did that, but okay, maybe that wasn't the best move. Okay, let's course correct. Mm -hmm. Let's not go that way again. Yeah. And those things live forever on the internet. And it, it's something as a content creator, you have to be okay with um, not always getting it right, yeah. you know, but we try to learn and we try to listen and adapt and come up with new things and new ideas. Oh, the dog. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to cut that out. Dog just had a hairball. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like for example, there you know I could think of a particular episode, and there's going to be a lot more that I'm not thinking of. But like the uh, 
shocks or shots <laughs> episode that we did with myself and Chad Watson from My Daily Bourbon where mm -hmm. we had electrodes hooked up to us and you gave us questions and if we got the question wrong we either had to take a shot of something we did not like or you get a shock. a shock that increased it was really fun but it didn't do well at all so yeah. we haven't done another one since it doesn't mean that we won't because sometimes if we just get a hair we're like we're gonna do another one of those uh, because it's fun and that's something that we can bring in other people from whiskey to, which we like doing occasionally. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. It's on the table. Maybe yeah. it needs. And so that's the other part of like this whole thing that we do. It's very much science. I mean, but an mm -hmm. unknown science. You identify the variables that you could have changed with any given episode or experiment. Right. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, well, I want to isolate this one. Let's change it and see if that changes anything. So it's a, it could be as easy as changing the title, changing the thumbnail, right, right. or maybe we just need to restructure the format of the video. Maybe it should be shorter. I have shorter. an idea. I have an idea, Sarah. It's, uh, these questions are all about Buffalo Trace still. <laughs> These questions all are trivia about Buffalo oh, Trace. Oh, I see, because Buffalo okay. Trace is highly clickable content because the general, it's very well known. They've got the Wellers, they got the Pappies, they got the b -tacks. The b -tacks. <laughs> And we love Buffalo Trace, we're not dumping well, on yeah, them. No. But it is one of those distilleries that if you put out an episode of a product that is made by them, it tends to do better. I don't think that's a secret. I think everyone on Whiskey Tube knows that. He's a content creator. But that doesn't that mean we're gonna only already. start reviewing products from Buffalo Trace, because yeah, that would be. We've had eight years to do that and that and wouldn't be very much value to you so yeah you don't want to lose your credibility i think that's the, you know the big thing mm -hmm. like oh they've you know i'm sure people have said we've sold out before uh, as soon as we ever did the first ad or first um integration with a product or whatever and again it's a tightrope it's walking yeah. a fine line if you haven't heard us say it before and if you've made it this far in the episode i can only assume that you care a little bit you know it is a fine line we don't love taking sponsorships because we don't want anyone to feel that we have in any way sold out. But if we do a sponsorship, it's because we have tried and enjoy or and or use and or like the product that we are talking about in the right. sponsorship. Well, there we go. That's a tough, uh, that's a whole topic. I, I could have talked even more about editing. Um, one pet peeve I have is when people don't do crossfades in their audio and you hear the a noticeable difference between clips and audio. Do those crossfades, folks. It works wonders. Um, You're losing me. <laughs> but that's about it. So, <laughs> hey, if you haven't subscribed us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here and hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, till next time, drink more bourbon. Mm -hmm.